few months ago, a guy called Joey GT got in touch with me. He's got an Irish delivered EP80 with the 2EE engine, and he's got the taking the original engine loom out of it. He wants to put a GT Turbo 40 FTE engine in. So he bought a a loom. Luckily he bought one of the right sort of uh, year and month, so it's not too dissimilar, but um, the first problem he had was trying to plug it in on the inside of the car. He had these two plugs here. This GT Turbo one's got 20 pins, this one's got 16 pins. There are some missing pins on this one as well. Originally what he'd asked was, can I just de-pin this and pin it into this? And the first thing I said was, I'm not sure, but that might work. Uh, but I said, just send them over to me. Because these are two different countries, Japanese, European right-hand drive, the wiring's completely different. I said, send it over, let me have a look at it. So the main things that are different, um, most things will plug in. These two big plugs here go in, these go in the fuse box, and these are pretty much identically wired. But the big difference is um, on the NA car, you'll notice there's none of these separate MIDI fuses, um, which you get on the GT Turbo. That's an 80 amp one and that's for the alternator and the GT turbo engine puts out a lot more current on the alternator. So it's not as simple as just a case of plugging them in. Another thing here is this is a all S fuse uh, and that's separate from the fuse box on any car but on a GT turbo that's actually through this, it's plugged in. So the fuse is actually present on the actual um, GT turbo fuse box. So he's keeping all the chassis wiring um, for the EP80. Um, and just wanting to swap the, the engine loom in. So it is a bit of a job, it is a little bit involved. Luckily a lot of these wires are just for the diagnostics port, which it's not necessary to keep. But yeah, so the next step, I'm gonna strip the two harnesses down to the bare bones, um, take all the tape and the, the plastic off of them and set them out alongside each other, try and remove all the engine parts from one, put it into the other, and keeping the body functions because we don't want to lose any of them. Um, and it's just a case of using documentation, multimeter, just create a pin out for each one just before you start stripping anything because you don't want to be cutting wires and have no idea how it goes back together. And unfortunately, it's a big time consuming job. So this is, could be done by anyone, uh, but you just got to have the patience and the time and you can't rush this. Another thing to mention, that's ABS fuse and this this 2EE, the any car never came with ABS. Joe's not fitting any anyway, so it's no big deal. There's other functions. As well on this plug, you've got um, a couple of wires here for the TEMS system, which is the electronically adjustable suspension that you got in some GT turbos. That's present on this as well. The black with the white stripe is the starter motor. That is exactly the same AM2, which is a lot of your sort of body. Uh, in car power is that white with the red stripe and that. That is in a different location. And then you've got loads of other different wires. So you've got a blue, white one here. And you don't have another thicker gauge. You've got another blue and white one here, but it's thin. So, you know, you could have plugged this one in, but you may end up blowing up fuses and things. There'll be splices hidden along here. I think they're actually mostly all in this section here. Um, but you'll find out once you start stripping the wire, but do not start cutting wires before you've completely stripped it, because that's what I did the first time I ever did this, is I started just going, right, I don't need injectors, I don't need, you know, all these things. I started cutting all the wires, and then you would trace them back, and you find these splices, and you'd be like, oh no, okay, I've just cut all that out, and you actually need it for, for more than just sometimes the ECU things, sometimes you need it for, so for example, those red wires, that's a starter signal. One going to the fuse box to tell the starter relay, you switch on and the other one is going to the ECU to tell it that you're trying to start. This GT Turbo Loom has seen better days. Some of this stuff, I'll fix that. This is the oil pressure light. This wire is absolute toast. Yeah, the other complication is going to use the GT Turbo gauge cluster with the stock EPA to wiring. <laughs> really matters what year you have um, because the, the wiring changes for both uh, the European plus with the automatic manual transmissions they change the wiring all the time. What I've started doing is just circling so I've got the two connectors that are the same and I've just wrote down the purpose of each one um, and then I'm circling all the ones with a circle they're different 
Um, some of them have got a semicircle because it's partially similar, but they, they splice out and power all different things. Um, there's your 20 pin and your 16 pin, but you can see I've circled a few things there. So on, on that, it's actually on this connector here. So some of it could be fixed kind of relatively easy, easily, and that's sort of what, where I'm at now. But the 2EE wiring he sent me, as much as it's a bit old and dirty, for the most part, it's in good shape. A uh, problem start when you see things like this here. You can see that it's looking a little bit worn. Um, and that's the same on the turbo harness as well. You can see here as well on the turbo, the, the strands broken. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this. So that's your starter wiring. When engine's hot, this is a this is a reason your car might not start very well because these these do get worn over time. One other thing that's quite handy to know is that if you're not sure what year your wiring's from. This part number here, so 82121 is the start for every wiring harness and then 1C052. I can use the part diagrams online to figure out uh, what vehicle that was from. <laughs> This is a GT turbo harness, all stripped. I've got a few connectors. Some of these were a bit worn at the wire, so I've just cut them off and I'll recrimp them on. I've got the terminals. I'm just gonna give this a little clean up. You'll probably see it's a bit dirty, but what I'm gonna do is strip the EP80 harness, run it over the top. I've already removed the two wires for the Thames here. And you'll see this is my pile of rubbish. So that's the Thames connector. It goes through the chassis wiring, which doesn't have any Thames, so I've just went ahead and cut this out. So that's the knock sensor wire. The blue part's uh, covering with a shield, so you can, I could get away with taking a little bit of length off that. All of these injector connectors are wrecked. So another thing is well, that's the blue tape here underneath, this is all Toyota's splices. You'll see, uh, and they're all throughout the loom. So the GT Turbo harness for the most part is what I want, so I'm just going to be removing the bits that I don't need and replacing them with parts of the EP80, which I do need. Got the EP80 here stripped down for the most part. The main bits I'm interested in are the, these body connectors. I've got an alternator pin, which I might need to rescue, so I may need to strip this part as well. A separate Alt-S fuse, and also he's gonna be using the starter and alternator from the EP80. And if you can have a little look here, there's quite a bit of difference in the power wire in here. Not major, but a little bit of difference um, over here. So we've got these fuses that aren't present on the EPAs. It's doubled up for the alternator here versus what you've got here. So I'm probably just going to opt with this because it's lighter. We don't need it. Um, and it's also a bit, bit in better shape. I mean, this wire, this wiring is pretty decent, to be fair. On the EP80, you've got this uh, heavy gauge blue with white stripe. And that goes all the way to the interior connector here. So I'm going to de-pin that from this side and the opposite side over there. And then I'm going to... So this is actually... This is the connector for the EP80, which I need to fit to the GT Turbo Loom. So the GT Turbo Loom has got most of the stuff I need. The ECU connectors obviously got more wires on it and things, there's more connectors, so I'm going to keep this as my sort of base. I've, you see I've stripped it off and cable tied it just to keep it all organised and sort of branches and things, but I'm going to strip out this battery wiring, we don't need that, um, and just slowly but surely use my documentation to just, this. so this is the, the 2EE harness and I need to match this up with the GT Turbo. These are the body connectors, so you can see that 16-pin one is this one here. Um, the 8-pin, wider, bigger terminals is this one here. Uh, that remains the same on both, but I'll be just taking all this power wiring out anyway. The fuse box connectors are the other one that I'm interested in, so that's up here. It's just slightly different pin out, so I'm just going to match it and 
also I need this all S fuse. This is a GT turbo harness. Just spent the last couple of hours there cleaning oil had got in between the tape. Give it a good clean up. This is a fan switch. So this is some of the stuff from the EPA, which was in better shape. Uh, some of the connectors were ruined on the GT Turbo one, so I'm going to keep this fan switch. Uh, and you see I'm just laying it all on top now. This is the interior connector, um, where these three wires are going to be kept, because they're not present on the GT Turbo harness. Um, so just laying it on top, and then and see all these ones are going to come in. This uh, brake level sensor wasn't was also cut off with the GT Turbo Harness, so I've just cut it there and I'll make a repair. I'm gonna stagger these, so as much as it looks like they're buttoned together, I'm actually gonna cut one slightly longer than the other just so that the two splices are spaced out and they don't rub together. I had to do a little repair here. It's gonna be mounting the battery in the boot or in the rear of the car. I'll put a new ring terminal on this. This um, blue section of wire here is a fusible link it's basically an inline fuse within the wire um, and this cover will help but if there's a problem it'll burn through that wire and that's starter motor wire, uh, solenoid wire was in better shape so I'm keeping that as well. Um, so I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I've started doing it here already, is just taping up this and these terminals have got little sharp edges so I'm just going to tape around that and then fish them through.